Hello everyone. I'm just getting on with D. Uh, she's gonna join us in two seconds here, and I'm gonna also go live on Facebook. I'm gonna watch an event. Gosh, I mean, it certainly is. Yes, Deidre. Let's fucking go. Boom, boom. There we go. She's coming. Hello, hello, oh, my friend. Wow. Yeah, it's fucking summertime with your hat. I love it. You're so funny. You're so oh, funny. I wear hats all the time now. It's crazy. I love it. I think you my friend. Oh, it's it's uh, breaking up. I said, how are you doing, my friend? So good. I'm just going live on uh, Facebook, too. Amazing. I do that. Gosh. I wonder if I could go live with you on Facebook and then just mute my computer so there's no feedback. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know how, if you can, I'm, on, I'm going live on Facebook on my computer. Mm. And, then, and then, there we go. Is this under Shine or is it under something else? Under Shine. Okay. Let's see if I can be on both. It might work. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to watch and I'm going to mute it. Okay. Do, do, do. Oh, what happened? It ended. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, well, my goodness. The end I, of these days. Hey. What I did something happen? that was not community standards. Oh, it was your dance moves. It was my dance moves. <laughs> Clearly. Oh, I can't even see. There you go. Last thing, okay? Shut up those dance moves. Got to be careful. It's a... It's a... It's a <laughs> Deadly. <laughs> I could cause a stroke. Oh, my God. I love you so much. You're one of my favorites. Aw, so good. Love Tell you. me about Atlantis. What are we doing? What did you say? Tell me about Atlantis. What are we doing? Atlantis? Yeah, or Egypt or whatever. Oh, what is there to say about Egypt? Oh, <laughs> right. I remember I was <laughs> what I was downloading when I was living. Right. Isis, tell me. So wild. Okay, so, awesome. so the cats that I have, I adopted two cats this last year because Lewis passed away. So, what? Yeah, Lewis passed away last summer. <laughs> so heartbroken I mean yeah, I you know how I was with Lewis um but I adopted two cats because my friend was like you were an Egyptian um princess in your past life and these cats are supposed to protect uh -huh. you and I was like you're speaking my language man <laughs> <laughs> you're like I know yeah. <laughs> it was like what? I don't have any cats right now I'm traveling and then I was like sucker said the right things you know I love it you're like, what princess? I was a fucking goddess. What? Yeah, totally. Well, okay. So my cat's name are Prince, the boy, and then the girl is Isis, like Princess Isis, and then because uh -huh. because Lewis was King Lewis, right? So there's only one king. Oh my god! <laughs> You're hilarious. Okay, tell tell us about turn your light on. What are we doing? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I haven't ran this event in two years live. And as you know, the whole world is opening up right now. So that's really exciting. And I'm running the Turn Your Light On event July 6th to 8th in Vancouver at the Heritage Hall. And it's just like mm -hmm. such beautiful space. It's so open. And this event really is about three main things. I was just talking to someone earlier today about this. It's like, if we want to become the people like the soul evolution of who we're meant to be as an expression into the world, there's three main things we got to master. Number one is we have to master our personality because if we don't understand how our personality is impacting us and blocking us and showing up, we are essentially going to continue to be in patterns that block us from being us who like who we're actually meant to be. For mm. example, I actually have something written here because I had a profound moment yesterday and I was like, I got to write this shit down because <laughs> I'm 
part of my personality was coming up and like our personality isn't bad it's only it's only not great if we don't know when it's showing up for us and how it's impacting us so it was yesterday or the day before I was having this inner dialogue that was like this needs to be done this way and if it's not done this way it's not good enough and it was like back and forth back and forth and I was getting all this anxiety and I was like oh my gosh like this is not fun <laughs> I'm not even low here like I gotta get out of this and I realized it was my ego trying to make things perfect. And I think a lot in life, we have these programmings that are causing us to stay in ways of being that aren't serving us. And then I had this divine download that said, stop making things bigger than they need to be and let them be what they're meant to be. Mm. And so in that moment, I realized, oh my God, it's my ego. It's my ego hijacking my plans. It's my ego telling me what I'm doing isn't enough. And like, you know, if you're watching right now, whether it's like the replay or live, like put your hand up, whether I can see you or not, I can feel you or like, <laughs> up, you know, and let us yeah, know. Does that show up for you? Because that's one of the biggest reasons why us like visionaries, leaders, impact driven entrepreneurs, as thought leaders aren't putting ourselves out there in a bigger way. It's because of our personality, our programming, our past trauma, mm -hmm. our imprints, all the stuff in the mm -hmm. us not being able to see it. And then we're like, oh, I just can't. I'm not, <clears throat> I don't have the time, whatever it is. It's mm -hmm. like, well, you do. It's just, our, have you learned how to master your personality, right? Mm -hmm. So that was me yesterday. Move through it. Thank, thank the universe for that one. Cause it was like crazy conversation in my head. And I was like, Whoa, I didn't even know I had these conversations. It's illuminated. So day one of the event, the turn your light on event, we are deconstructing the personality so that it can work for you. So that's step mm. one. Mm. What's coming up for you as I share this shine, like super curious, like I can like, yeah. like rocking back and forth. <laughs> the one thing that's coming up for me is i love you so much and i adore what you're doing in the world i just think you're the best um the second thing that's coming up is uh matthias de stefano is a fucking rock star i love him he's on gaia have you seen his show initiation i haven't so good he like remembers his lives in atlantis he remembers his lives on sirius he remembers all these cool lives in Egypt and he like walks through this stuff. And he was, I was listening yesterday and he was saying that the same thing happened to him where it was like his ego and his personality was trying, he was trying, he was trying to put that in charge mm. of his life and let that part of him run the show. And I've heard other people say this too, that when you do that, you really can only live from the past because your personality, your, your mind doesn't know anything except what's happened. Yeah. Your soul knows what's coming, knows what's possible, knows exactly where to go, how to get there, and can guide you in the most, like, most not only efficient, but fun way, mm -hmm. in ways that you might not even think are rational, but it's like, oh, I don't know why, but I'm supposed to go down this street, and then the synchronicities happen, and you're like, whoa, how did that happen? Yeah. And so I, I totally get it, and I love it. So giddy up, let's yeah. go. So, so day one is like big time. That's what we're doing. We're releasing, we're shedding, we're understanding the mechanisms, the, the programmings, the, mm -hmm. the um, ways of protecting ourselves that we don't even know that we have. Like, to be really honest, like, first of all, what I've noticed about this work and just my work in general and people who are putting stuff into the world, our biggest teacher is ourself. Like, I went through the other day and I was like, why am I so anxious? This is not how I normally am. And it's because I was in battle with myself and it became so obvious. And so when we learn how to master our personality, deconstruct it, then we can see it. And then we can be like, no, thank you. But the problem is so many of us are in this cycle. We're frustrated because we're not making the impact that we want. We're not taking the steps. We're, we're not making the progress that our soul wants us to make. And it's because we haven't mastered this. So day one's all about that. It's going to be like, you're going to leave day one being like, whoa, I just like de deconstructed my entire self. And yeah. 
and I just see my true identity. And then day two is all about activating our true identity. So I'm taking people through an activation. We're going to be doing some work. And our true identity is where we actually get true power from. It's not a power stance. It's not how we like dress or any of that stuff. Like it's all great. Sure. Whatever. That's surf surface level. But true power is from understanding like who we actually are and being that and not betraying that like being like no this is me and then honoring that so that's day two any feedback on that from you i know you want to have stuff to say i love it no keep going and then day three is about becoming a conscious creator and so the yeah. thing um like if you're one percent off from your vision from where you're meant to be if you're one percent off like if you think about a a plane that's going to a destination, if it's 1% off from the beginning, you could end up in a different country, right? So mm -hmm. precision, decision, precision, mm -hmm. intention, and also understanding how to be a conscious creator. And then we're going to map out a plan so that you are stepping into the space of conscious creation. Because once you're in a space of deconstruction, activation of true identity. Now it's about taking your true identity and magnetizing it and broadcasting into all areas of your life so that you are going to want to go. And it's not about the destination. I mean, our soul wants us to fulfill certain things. So it is about a destination, but not the ones in our personality. It's yeah. about being on that path and that's where everything flow state abundance friendship like our amazing friendship shine like one of your events was the very first event i ever went to in the space of like consciousness or personal development look what i'm doing now which event if i didn't go to your event dream talks like i don't know probably like seven years ago when i was going through my big transition would I potentially be on this path? I probably would be, but not in the same way. Now I've supported over a thousand people. It's because I went to an event. We have opportunities through people, through experiences, through environments, through courses, mentors, all that to say yes. And most of the time, because of fear, because of programming, because we're busy, right? We don't always say yes to that. But when we can say, you know what? I feel the nudge, I feel the pull. I'm just going to show up anyways. It has the power to transform your life. So I can easily say, I'm doing what I do. And the people I've served around the world is a big part because of you, Shine. Because you were one of the first people that I actually met in the space of, of this work, you know, um, seven years ago, that wasn't landmark or traditional, like, personal development. It's because I came to an event. I was open and I listened to my soul and that's crazy. Cause that's your impact. Mm. Right. I don't know if I ever told you that, but like, because of you, I'm on this path. You're one of the mm. reasons I'm on this path. Yeah. Is that Love it. Love it. Yeah. One of the waypoints, I'm sure you would have found another path, but it's cool. It's, it's so fun to be a part of yeah. that. Literally for me, that is my favorite. I have two favorite things. One is when I can see a connection between like two people that might not have happened if I wasn't there or at least it wouldn't have happened in that moment like when like p two people come to an event and they really hit it off or you can just like I'll, I'll sit at an event and like watch a, you know business like connection be made or something fun I'm like I love I love making connections and then my second favorite thing is when 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 we've created something like when I've been part of creating an event and I can sit at the back and just watch and just see things happening. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's how like our souls must feel is like, just, just like being, a, just being a part of it from a distance mm -hmm. and kind of observing and feeling like, wow, I helped make this happen and look at this amazing magic that's happening. Yeah. And there's a scene in, uh, what's it called? Oh, the legend of Bagger Vance. Have you seen that with Matt Damon and Will Smith? It's really good. Apparently it's the, it's the story of the Bhagavad Gita. Um, but there's this one scene where he says, like, they, you know, they say that God is happiest when his children are at play. Or something. And I've always kind of kept, I like, I love, I love it. I, I always feel so good when, when I can kind of step back yeah. and just see, see people, you know, enjoying them and in a, in a, that, that I feel like I've had an impact in a way that, that is, is helping people. So thank you. That's sweet. Yeah. And I wanted to share that because it's like, 
you never know. Well, first of all, you had to decide one day that you were going to run that event, right? You had to decide that you were going to host it and put yourself out there. So you had to move through your own personality stuff in some way, potentially, right? And then also, I needed to be like, I needed to take action. So it's actually a beautiful co-creation of like setting the space. I'm doing this. I'm leading whatever this is, listening to your soul. And then it's also that beautiful invitation for others to listen to their soul too. And that's really what this is about. So it's about us listening to our soul and showing up for that. And the impact that we're able to make, sometimes we don't even know. We don't even, because we're just showing up and listening. So that's one of the things I love people helping to navigate internally. Like you've, you've played with my, some of my work before, so you know what it is, right? But it's like, um, it's about having the tools, the understanding, and then just making it happen. I love to see people thrive and grow and launch new business ventures and friendships and really like step into who they are meant to be in the world. And we're all just in our lane doing our thing. And one of your things was doing that event. So like so much gratitude to you for mm -hmm. doing that, you know, like seven yeah. years ago or six years ago. Yeah. So was that the one at the Playhouse Theater, or was it in a, in a hotel ballroom? I think it was with, a ballroom, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was actually April and William. I had nothing to do with that event other than, you know, supporting. I spoke at that event. Oh. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't at all part of the – Crystal and I took the lead on the next Dream Talks yeah. with William, and we were, we were running also the Dream Journeys. Yeah. Um, so shout out to William and April and yeah. the, the, dream, the Dream Team. Totally. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. And so that's the cool thing about these like invitations or when things come in onto our path, it's on our path for a reason. There's something there. And um, that's what I always get curious about. I'm like, what's here? Am I going to meet someone? Am I going to like, mm -hmm. some, like you just never know. And, and that's what I love about the community that you've created. And I can't wait to um, interview you on community creation. Cause you're just like, you're community wizard, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, the happy, go lucky, fun, visionary shine making shit happen, you know? And it's like, it's cool to see everyone's like superpowers and, and just honor that. Mm. Yeah. I'm so excited. I love, it feels like right now, like I'm kind of getting my, I'm getting in my zone. Yeah. And then like, you're like, you're, you're doing your thing and getting in your zone. And there's a lot of other people in the same boat, I guess. We attract people who are at a similar place. I'm really excited for when we hit the Avengers stage of our careers where we're like, we start to really like work together and in more like direct impactful ways. It's going to be really fun. Yeah. I feel like we're going to make some cool shit happening. That's so epic. That's so epic. I'm super excited. Yeah. I'm so excited about this event. It's going to be so much fun. And, um, I have an idea for something in the future. I'm not going to share it on the live, but you're definitely going to be a part of that. It's a bigger experience. That's more like global impact sort of thing. But um, I just think it's so awesome. I'm so like happy for you and everything that you're creating and like what you stand for. And like, I remember when I first met you and I joke about this a lot. Like I was like, who is this guy? He was like bopping around. And <laughs> Haven't changed much. Yeah. <laughs> Around, all white and like, I don't know you're making like weird noises once next moment you're like lying down with something over your eyes legs up the wall essential oils and I like just was new to like that I was like I don't know what's going on with this guy but like and you're like love you love you love you and I remember being like whoa this is like a lot right and now I'm that person I'm that person you're funny. oh I love it that's funny <laughs> It is funny, right? Yeah. People are like, who is this girl? Yeah. Jesus, she's got a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I joke that yeah. if my old self, like, I don't know, probably like seven years ago, maybe 10 years ago, were to meet me today, she'd be like, oh, really cool. Really, really cool. That's really awesome. Oh, that's really weird. Can you just lock her up for a bit? Because, like, I don't know. <laughs> cool with that. But that's also ego stuff. Like, our ego keeps us 
in fear and separation and judgment uh, to others. And I was thinking about this today. I did a light therapy session and I was, um, it's this really incredible light. I'll have to introduce you to the person because you would love it, Shine. And she's amazing. But it's like this light therapy thing that basically gets you into these different states. And I was thinking about how judgment shows up externally first. Like when we're not aware that we are judgmental towards ourselves. From my experience, it's like we're super judgy to other people. And we're like, that's mm -hmm. weird. I don't know. Like, we create a lot of duality. We live in a dual world. Like, everything in the physical is like that. And then once we kind of, you know, have moved through some of our own inner work, then we notice we're judging ourselves. And then we're like, shit, this is <laughs> it was way easier yeah. to judge other people, right? It's true. And then we go into a space of like, oh, compassion towards self and, and compassion to more people, more like humanity. But yeah, so it's, it's funny. I, I had that moment today where I'm like, oh yeah, like it start, it's external. And so I always see external judgment when people judge me. I'm like, oh, like they're judging themselves, right? Uh, they just don't even know it. And then it's like the people who aren't so judgy on the outside are usually more aware of their judgment towards self and then they're transcending that so anyways just a bit of a download today on that <laughs> you're so fun yeah. i have a question yeah. um so i just did a live uh and i was talking about my process of meditating uh kind of getting into the vortex getting into that receiving mode mm -hmm. where i'm now receiving thoughts from my higher self that are uplifting that are kind of building the positive momentum mm -hmm. and then I'll eventually get into a place where I'm like connected enough to just have a conversation with my higher self and ask questions and I will get answers that I wouldn't have said or thought otherwise. Like I, I'm like, Oh, that's different. Like I, I know that I'm, it feels different and, I, and the answers I'm getting. So I know that I'm connected to like a different part of myself. And then what I've been working on is I'll, I'll, I would like get into these really high states. I'd be flying, feeling really, really good. And then I would come home and I would come up against something that had an old trigger around it or whatever. And I would go from like, you know, flying in the sky to like crashing on the ground right. and being like, fuck. And so my, my natural, uh, not natural, but my, my sort of impulse was like, oh, now I need to go and fix mm. this thing that shot me out of the sky so whatever the trigger was i had to get in there and like fix it and whatever and then when i i you know I, I might spend a little while trying to do that and trying to like feel my feelings or clear it out or clean it up and that keeps me out of the receiving mode out of connection with my higher self for a, a lot of the time and then when i reconnect with my higher self and i i kind of give up on trying to fix stuff my higher self is like, oh, uh, yeah, that's not very, you know, that it's not, it's not working. It's not very helpful. You should just stay connected and you'll be guided from your, like, con from connection to your soul. You'll be guided to the right ways to sort of navigate around things, but you don't need to like go into it from that perspective of like fixing it or trying to like breathe it out or clear it out. I'm yeah. curious how you think about all that stuff. Cause I know, you were talking about that and you it's probably a big part of your coaching. I love this. Um, I feel <laughs> more subtle and some people may not be fully aware of this. Like the way you're speaking, I'm really feeling into it energetically on different levels. So I feel like I can really relate to this. Um, so what I'm hearing is I'll go into really high states. I have clear guidance and then I'll get triggered. I'll knock myself out of it. I'll try to figure it out. I'll try to fix it. And no, no, someone else does it to me, Deidre. I'm the victim. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. <laughs> I love you. And, and then from there, oh, I know. And then from there, it's like, oh, well, if I could stay in my higher self flow and all of that, then I would have solutions. So what I'm really feeling when you share this um, is – this comes down to self-compassion, and I really do feel like it's once we've had some self-mastery, um, you know, and I, I feel like it, it does probably impact, like, how we were raised and all of that, but if you're taking yourself out of a state of 
flow or um, bliss and all of that, it's because there's something that needs to either be cleared, um, be um, transcended, to be worked through. But it's interesting because like, I got into personal development like 10 years ago and I got into personal development because I fundamentally thought something was wrong with me. I was like, I need to be better. If this isn't working in my life, if my marriage isn't working, if that's not working, I need to be better. And guess what? Like I was always improving, but I was operating from a programming Mm -hmm. that something was wrong with me. So whenever something wasn't working, well, guess what? It's something's wrong with me. And so (laughs) what I'm hearing is, I'm hearing high states of bliss, high levels of consciousness to like, oh, I have to fix this. So for you, it feels like there's just some stuff to uh, move through energetically and connect the two of like, I can see that, I can feel that. And it just feels like intuitively it's practice for you. Like I'm just getting like, because you're you're such a master at so much of this that you don't even know you are. It's it's the practice. It's almost like going to basketball practice and being like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I just got to show up for some more basketball practices. And then I'm going to be able to give myself permission to be in the state and experience it, but move through it quickly. Because what I'm noticing, like when I was living in Mexico, I was in Mexico, um, you know, in, I think, yeah, I was in Mexico in the winter time. And I was moving through the highest states of bliss I've ever been in. Like it was off the charts. Like I can't even describe it. I was like obsessed in love with myself in my life. Like it was so wild and cool and amazing. And what allowed me to break free of my normal states of feeling really good, like I feel really good most of the time, was that I had to go through like this, um, I had to really process some shame and some programming that I had from childhood and just like my beingness of like right and wrong. And there were some things happening in a personal relationship that I was in at the time where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm wrecking this. I'm I'm bad, I'm wrong because this isn't working. It, as opposed to accepting the universal flow that like a flower, sometimes it blooms, sometimes it dies. When you're in a different environment, things change. It was like the lack of acceptance with this season of life that I was in that caused me to go into black and white, something's wrong with me. So through transcending and moving through that, I was able to reach these new states of bliss and a deeper understanding of, I need to have more acceptance of the seasons of life and that's an area where i have old programming that's not allowing me to feel good about the transition because it's a new territory so again it's kind of like basketball practice and i think that that's what you're going through and that's like your highest self communicating to you so does that make sense does that does that resonate with you yeah i mean that's what i got today was like that something like I was out for a walk. I was in that high state of feeling really good. I got a phone call, something about it just was triggering. And it kind of in, in the past, I would have gone into that and like tried to fix it in the moment and tried to like deal with it or feel better about it or like, Mm -hmm. like directly address it in a way. And what I had, sort of made a promise to myself was like, I'm no longer going to act from my ego, my, my personality, like my lower self or my no whatever self. I'm going to always try and tune into my higher self before doing anything and making any decisions or, and even a decision of like, I'm going to focus on this. Right. And so I was like, okay, like my only job right now is to get back in touch with my higher self. It doesn't matter that I just had a phone call that was triggering, whatever, I can come back to it. My only job is to get in touch with my higher self. Yeah. So I just kind of like, I was in a beautiful place eating berries, like just chilling as you do. And, and I got back in in a couple minutes by just meditating, focusing, connecting with nature, touching a tree really helps for me sometimes or mm-hmm. anything kind of uh, grounding. And I, I just got back in. And when, when I kind of tune in and ask my higher self, like, okay, like, is there anything to do with this? It's like, no, don't worry about it. Like, you don't, you don't need to focus on it. And you don't need to know, like, it, I've been getting that a lot, actually. 
which is weird for me because I'm such a fixer. I'm such a like yeah. want to get in there and do stuff. Yeah. And when I when I first started, it's only been in the last like two months that I've really begun this actual communication between me and my higher self and like actually talking. Mm -hmm. And the surprising thing was like the the amount of subjects that it was like nope don't like it's just not time like don't worry about it don't think about it there's yeah. too much wrapped up in it it's it's too it's it's too kind of like triggering there's too many things just don't even think about it just let it go for now focus on other things and it'll come back around and it has like there are there are pieces that I'm I've been working with that are important and it might I'm like oh don't think about it but it'll kind of come up in certain ways and I'll 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 engage with it and and it it'll, it'll kind of just happen yeah. And so that's what I'm getting is like, as as long as I'm tuning back in and not, because where, where I get stuck is I'll, I'll try and like, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to focus on trying to, okay, how do I, how do I mind me fig figure this out? And that gets me spinning and stuck. And then I'll be even more mad that I'm out and spinning and stuck. And then it kind of perpetuates. And so I think this is, this is a new good thing. But I was just curious, like Abraham has, they're um they've got a whole bunch of different processes of how to get back in the vortex and the most recent one is called um calibrating where you like have a piece of paper and you write down like what happened mm -hmm. and then you're like i you know i got triggered by this conversation about blah 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 and then they're like well generally uh how do you feel about life and blah blah, blah. it's like well generally i feel really good generally like and and just kind of going general about mm -hmm. things and just like but even then I, I i've been wary of getting into that so i'm wondering do you have any like specific practices that you use to sort of navigate think like triggers and things yeah you know it's it's so interesting because my ego has been so big and obvious for me lately whereas in the past I wouldn't have noticed it right like in the past I'd be like oh I need to focus on this thing or whatever but lately my ego has been really strong in the way of like it's been trying to keep me into who I always have been in certain arenas and ways of being so what I've been doing when I've been triggered is I've been going out of nature like walking is so big for me and also like Sometimes feeling it, sometimes really feeling it, because I feel like sometimes when I really feel the, ah, you know, then I'm yeah. like, okay, I got, I gave myself permission to feel it because a big thing within my own experience of self is I've actually had a programming um, where it's like, it's not safe to feel like this. You don't have the right to feel yeah, yeah. And so for me, um, it just depends on what it is. So allowing myself to really feel mm -hmm. like it's not in front of someone, but like, oh my gosh, like I'm really feeling this emotion, mm -hmm. really feeling this trigger, going for a walk. And then I have a ton of processes that I do to get into peak states. Like I was joking with my mm -hmm. mastermind the other day, a month or so ago, they're like, you're always so happy and perfect and everything's great all the time. And I was like, well, I'm really <laughs> happy that you see me that way because it's because I do all of the things so that I'm in those states especially when I'm working with people so that was not a like me being fake putting on a show it's like well it's because I actually have practices and tools um, yeah. I go to when I need them to get into a big state and I was like oh funny enough I took four hours today to get into a great state so that I could teach for a full weekend with you guys. And they're like, Oh my gosh, we had no idea. I'm like, yeah, cause these are the things that we need to do. So for me, I have, I had a song at my place before, you know, um, breath work, um, mantras, tuning forks, like whatever I need, I'll give it to myself. Right. Because mm -hmm. I need different things for different things. And, but one of the things that I find really helpful if, I'm feeling really triggered. Like I had a lot of anxiety yesterday and it was just really intense because I was battling with myself, my ego. And I was like, okay, like I got to sit with this intensity. What do I need right now? Like, what is this anxiety? What does this have to, what is the message that it has for me? And this is a process that I take people through. Um, but I do it with myself in a really quick way. And it's like, you need to like, you need to let go of control. I'm like, okay, I need to let go of control. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to imagine letting go of control, what would that look like? Okay. It would be, it would be acceptance. I would have to accept where I am 
with this thing that I'm trying to be in battle with and make different than it is. So kind of like what you were saying, like the trigger and you're trying to fix it. Well, what if instead of trying to fix something, you just had acceptance around it? And going back to my story of like Mexico, I was going through all this stuff because there was shame or, you know, went against my programming. But if I just was like, oh, I just need to have acceptance around this is what it is. And through that, I'm going to be able to go back to the state of freedom because acceptance is the highest state of freedom because we're not trying to change something. It's like me trying to change gravity. Like who's going to win? Gravity is going to win. <laughs> you it. can do it, D. <laughs> just, just focus really hard. <laughs> you know, so it's like acceptance and like, my biggest thing is like, and it's, it's pretty vulnerable for me to say this, but like I moved back to Vancouver a few months ago after being gone for a year and a half and traveling and all that. And I moved back to Vancouver, like literally into my apartment that I freaking love. And I'm like, sweet. It's going to be so fun to hang out with my friends and do all the things. And then as soon as I moved all my stuff in shine, my intuition said, this is temporary. And I was like, fuck you. Like, no, like I, what? <laughs> Like, actually, and so I was like, okay, I have to, I have to become really good at accepting who I really am and really accepting that I, I may have a home base in Vancouver that I come back to, but I'm a global citizen and I'm probably going to live all around the world, not because I want to, but because my soul is telling me this is a part of my path. So accepting what is is the biggest medicine of all and it brings up all of our stuff and i think it's the most powerful because that's where freedom is is acceptance i love it that's so great yeah it sounds like we're on a similar page and and that's what abraham talks about too is like just do whatever it takes to kind of get back into the vortex yeah and where i've tripped up is i will do that and then i'll think oh, I have to now do this for everything in my life, my past, and I'll kind of make it a practice yeah. to do it. Even when I'm not feeling bad, I'll, like, I would, like, try and, like, feel all my feelings fully and cry and mm -hmm. do the whole thing, but, like, for everything ever. Right. And it's, like, it's helpful in the moment to kind of get out of it and into a better state, mm -hmm. but I, I don't need to do it all the time. I don't need to, like... I don't, I don't need to go back and try and fix old stuff. Like, if it's important, it'll come up and I'll deal with it. Did I ever tell you how I got my name Shine? No. I mean, you probably have, but I forget. So tell. I don't think so, because it's part of this thing. So, uh, quickly, quick backstory. My dad passed away when I was 15. My mom got super depressed. She was a PhD psychologist, money in the bank, uh, you know, all the resources, all the connections, five years with the best psychologists in Vancouver and psychiatrists and whatever, no, no progress, pills and sleeping pills and, you know, whatever, like she was not doing, not doing well. And uh, basically got to the point where she's like, well, I don't really want to live like this. Like, well, you know, let's, let's like, what, what do I do? And so she, she moved back to her old, uh, her old stomping grounds in Alberta. And she kind of randomly found this therapist who someone recommended to her. And they were doing this work called the journey where you like go back into an old memory and clean it up and, and whatever. And so she went back into like a, a womb memory of something kind of really traumatic that happened when she, before she was even born. Mm. And she cleared that memory through this process of, the, it's called the journey.com I think. Mm. Um, Brandon Bays pioneered it. And so she did that, felt better, and said she literally hasn't been depressed since. And all that depression was kind of locked up in this old memory. And it was super fascinating for me because I'd kind of seen it from, I was there with her through that time, living with her, like help, trying to help her figure this out and, and nothing was working. And then all of a sudden she has this two hour, you know, guided visualization session and it's gone and so i was like oh that's curious so i like learned the process and became a practitioner myself and one of their practices is is literally going down the emotional scale mm. and so like whatever you're feeling right now feel it fully and don't don't bring the story just feel the feeling yeah. and so like people will people would just feel whatever they're feeling and it became this very predictable 
journey that people would go on. Um, like every single person that they worked with had the same journey. Mm. So they would feel their feelings, usually starting with some are negative because that's why they were there. They were going through something. So they would feel their feeling fully and the fear would turn into anger, would turn into whatever, would turn into frustration. Would, so they would kind of like move down the scale of emotions uh, and then they would get to avoid. And this would be a place where sometimes they would circle back and have to like repeat some, some patterns or if they were willing to fully release into the void, then they would start to go into the positive emotions. Mm -hmm. And then they would go like, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling happy. And then it would, if you, if they would keep going, it would expand into this state of connection with source mm -hmm. where you were like fully connected and feeling really good. And it was fascinating to watch. And I actually did it with people, even like live with a group and someone would get stuck with something and I would, it was the easiest way. I was like, Oh, just feel this fully. And then what's under that and feel that fully. And what's under that. And it would predictably lead people to this state of alignment. So I'm practicing this. I'm living in Victoria. I'm doing my thing and kind of like doing this and having fun with it. And I'm noticing that every single emotion, if I sit with it, will turn into this ocean of bliss, this connection to source. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. And in the past, I have, I have similar reflections as you where people are like, oh, you're so happy, you know, whatever. And you're, you must always be happy. And, you know, Crystal now knows. She's like, mm, not so much. Like, <laughs> you know, this is a practice. Yeah. And, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's like, it's, it's practice. And so um, I, would ha I had this one person tell me, like, oh, my God, you're so amazing. I love your energy. I love blah, blah, blah. And part of me was like, mm, you don't know all of me. And so I kind of, like, deliberately became, a, like, a bit of a negative version of myself to show her, like, I'm not always like this. And, like, ah. it was, like, but I, it wasn't conscious, but it kind of, like, happened. Yeah. and came out and 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 i and so i had obviously i had identified that i was sometimes good but sometimes bad and that's who i was yeah. was was a being of multiple uh emotional states I, or not even that like i was sometimes a good person sometimes a bad person mm. and when i started to learn this journey work and i started to go down these layers and actually feel that every single emotion I like, because I did it with everything. Because I'm, I'm kind of like hardcore, all in, like I oh, obsessed. Like, like me. I just go for them, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I was doing it with everything, and I was like, every single time I do this, I feel the same bliss and openness and connection to source. I'm, and it's like I must not be these negative emotions that are happening. Those are sort of the passing waves mm. that happen that come up but it's not who i am that's not my essence my essence is what remains and I actually wrote a song called love remains uh oh, like and it, it. it's fun I, I think i have a recording somewhere oh my gosh so I, that's amazing. that's why i chose the name shine because I, I was like that. shine is like and, and my name my middle name is sean and i was looking for a music music name but I was like, I wanted a name to remind me that I am this light. That's who I am at my core. And the rest of it is all the other parts of me, the, the, like the more negative parts of me are, are expressions of my disconnection, but not who I am. Yeah. And that's how I try and look at other people too. It's like, it's not who you are. It's, I don't think there are evil people in the world. I think people do things from a disconnected place, but there's, I don't think there is such a thing as evil actually i think there's good and distortions of good there's like there's light and then there's dark is just the absence of light it's not like a, mm -hmm. a thing that exists it's just like there's, there's light and then no light i love that and it's that's the thing it's like we have our we all have the potential to be in our light more than not right mm -hmm. and i remember like years ago 
You know, even seven years ago when I met you, I was in a very different place. Like, you know, I was not, I was not living in my purpose. I was doing good work, but not the work I was meant to do. I had a lot of insecurities. I had a lot of jealousy. I had, I had a lot of things externally look like everything was great, but I, I didn't, I wasn't able to master the inner world because it was coming from a place of distortion and misalignment but people thought I was the happiest person they knew and so it's like it's so beautiful to have conversations like this of like hey this is like me yesterday when I was sharing with you and like Mexico and like the relationship stuff it's like life is always happening and we always have opportunities to evolve and move through it and grow and I just love that we have similar um beliefs around what's possible for all of us when we when we have the right support the right community and all of that I think that we're all co-creating that together which is really cool yeah I love it good job Dee I love, love you good and like you. I'm super excited about like taking over the world <laughs> <laughs> and like getting uh, my own tv show like that's gonna be really yeah. exciting you're gonna be on my show um, just so you know, and, um, I'm really excited about this event. I'd love for anyone who's watching, listening to come. It's next week. If I were you and you're watching, just call in sick to work. We need mental health. <laughs> I love you. I have a friend who's a therapist. She's like, everyone should have their all should uh, use all their sick days in a year. I was like, that's great. And yeah. it's like, Seriously, though, like, I don't know, the biggest changes that I've had in my life is from just being like, okay, I'm gonna make it happen and then just doing it and then figuring it out. But if anyone feels the pull, I'd love to invite you. Um, it's gonna be super fun and transformational. And um, Shine, I want to have you on my podcast and stuff too. We just have to connect aside from this because there's a lot of, I'm just seeing like energetically a lot of things that we're gonna do together. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm so pumped. I love you. I have to go because I have to, something that I have to do before I go to an event, but yeah. it's been so much fun. We should do this like regularly on, on my mm -hmm. Instagram or your Instagram because yeah. there's some layers to go. Totally. That's what, that's, we literally built a feature called the love stream, which is like this if on Unite and I'll show you later. We'll Yay. Go. So yeah. good. Yeah. Shine. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I love you. I love you too. Good job. Talk You're doing you. great. Bye. 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 Bye.